Okay, this next one has a cute little one. It's got some squirrels on it that move back and forth. It's got a broken hand. Uh, it is a typical regular 25, 30 hour movement. Looks very greasy. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. We'll see what it uh, looks like when we get it off. But uh, this is our next project. Okay, let's have to replace uh, hands. Okay, the squirrels go back and forth. Okay. And see, as it cuckoos, these squirrels will do this. And that's operated by <coughs> a wire here. And that's hooked to the top cuckoo wire that's what makes the squirrels move when the cuckoo goes up that the wire here that's attached to wire down here that runs the runs the squirrels so we gotta unhook that one a little different squirrels.
Okay. One squirrel is hooked to the cuckoo on the one side, the other squirrel is hooked to the other cuckoo wire. So, not done with a clock like this. It had squirrels on the front. But, uh, okay, there's our movement. Case over there. Now we'll take a look at this and let's see what kind of shape we're in. Somebody tried to get this working by putting a, some real heavy grease on pivots here. Uh, had a comment uh, from somebody who wanted to know if I put one together and show them how to set the timing and what have you on it. This will be a little easier than a lot of cuckoo clocks are. One of the older ones, simply because the lift wheel is out here and we can make an adjustment by simply unscrewing, loosening this uh, star wheel up. That's the wheel that lifts the levers for the hammer and for the bellows. Um, this is a typical uh, rack and snail. Let's say it's a regular 25. Uh, made in West Germany, it says. And there's a lot of oil on this thing. Boy, it really got super over-oiled. So we will... They basically have three gears on the time side and four on the strike side, including the fan. And then, of course, you get the motion works in the middle. And uh, typical... Uh, regular 25. So we'll end up taking this all apart. And get the cuckoo out of here. Get him off of there so he's out of the way. And uh, we'll start taking all this apart. These are all held together with uh, these levers are held together with little C-clips or E-clips. And uh, the thing that you need to do when you're working on these if you're going to take them apart is you can uh, yeah, I don't know if this is even going to run ok there we go ok should put it into the stop position this is the position it would be in with uh, This is the position that these things would be in if it had just finished cuckooing. You gotta notice this little <clears throat> gathering pallet. There's a pin here that lifts this rack. The uh, there should be a, a lever that's underneath the end of the rack. Uh, notice the position. There's a pin in the notch of the of this gathering pallet, and at the same time. There's a lever that goes in here, and there's a pin that impinges upon that lever. That's in the stop position. So when you put this back together, what has to happen is that pin has to be against that lever. This pin has to be in the notch. So you have to adjust this gathering pallet so that it's in that position. And this has to be underneath the rack. You have that set up that way. Uh, it's timed right, it'll cuckoo right, everything will be just fine when you get it all back together. And maybe we show that it's a little too hard to really see a lot of that stuff right now. Uh, but that's basically what you need. That's where that pin has to be, when it's in the lock position. Okay. 
Well, we're going to take this apart and start by taking all this off the front. And these are held on with E-clips. Now these two are held on with E-clips that are behind the, on the inside of the plate. And as typical, it's the second wheels that tend to be worn the most.
Yeah, let's get them apart. <clears throat> Okay, I got this hole and this hole. <clears throat> I filed those out to the unworn side, and now we're going to drill those out to 2.97 millimeters so it can fit in a 3 millimeter OD bushing that has an as a bore of one millimeter and then we will uh, press those in <sighs> bush or uh, broach them and that'll finish that side well we got one more to do here that's a little bigger and then we'll be done with the bushings on this side so we're gonna drill those out Start out by drilling a smaller hole. Okay, 
Okay. And I'll take and put the actual bushings in. Bushing here and bushing here. Take a brooch, brooch that out slightly, and test the wheel. Almost, not quite. Brooch from the other side. That's good. Okay. I'll take the escape wheel. And then this one goes this way. Well, the escape wheel is going to go in this way. That's good. Okay. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four bushings done. And that makes a big difference in that movement. There's no flopping around in there anymore. Okay, so you got four done there. And then uh, there's one more actually I have to do here, and that's for the this one here where the star wheel goes. And then on the back, I've got three more to do. So we'll have a total of eight bushings on this one. All right, here's an example of when you have it apart, how you can tell if something needs rebushed. Shouldn't be any more deviation when you flop these around in there than four or five degrees. You see up and down that one goes like crazy. Side to side is oh you know it's not bad, but it's worn this way. So we have to replace that bushing. Okay, we're gonna ream this out to three point four seven. And now put the bushing in. We'll be done. Okay. Now there's no movement in that. None whatsoever. And we've got an end shake on all the gears. Oh, that runs smooth now. Yeah, one, two, Three bushings there, and uh, got one more to do back there. Got two bushings here, <coughs> and we got one, two, three here. So five. We've got seven done. One more bushing to go, and this is all done. Watch how smooth that runs. <laughs> it's not even got any oil in it. Everything's meshing beautifully. It's going to run better than when it was new. And there's no shaking in that thing anymore. That's nice and straight. Runs smooth. We've got end shake. And shake. Nice smooth running gears. Okay, all the bushing is done. Okay, and here are all the parts. 
of a regular 25 Google clock movement. And the plates, it's all been cleaned now. Here's the run train, the anchor, motion works, strike train, Google levers, two levers that control the keeping the door open and the levers then that control the number of cuckoos that count the stuff and there it is now it's time to put it back together everything's nice and clean everything's been rebushed I think I put eight bushings in there <clears throat> one final thing to do before putting these back together is to clean out each of the pivot holes with a toothpick. Make sure that there's absolutely nothing left inside each of those pivot holes. taken out. Alright, now take a knife and scrape off the gunk that's picked up on that toothpick. And then continue the rest of the pivot holes. sides so we make sure everything is nice and clean this is just why so-called Duncan Swish method of cleaning the clock misses a lot of stuff even after all of the cleaning that I've done this is still picking up a little bit of residue. And there's no way to do this without taking the movement apart. Okay. There's the gunk that would be left if you do the dunk and swish. It should be pointed out <coughs> that this is really a very uneconomical way if you were in the business of cleaning clocks. This is a regular 25 movement, been made for many, many years. And to do a job like this, eight bushings, taking it apart, hand cleaning everything, doing all that I've done with this, uh, send it away to be done you'd be charged a couple hundred dollars or more. Um, fact is, what you would do if you were in the business, you'd say, well, we'll just throw this movement away and we'll put a new one in. Because I can buy a new movement, a new regular 25 movement for not a whole lot more than a hundred bucks. About a hundred and six dollars, I think they were the last time I looked. Well, that's not a very economical way to do it, but if you want to do your own, or as I'm doing, I'm cleaning these for the sake of charity. And all I ask is a donation. And uh, otherwise, wouldn't be a smart way to do things. There's what's left if you just dunk and swish. See? So that's taken out the very last of the 
gunk that might be in the I'm giving them a final polishing and buffing and getting any residue out. Okay, that's good. That's the good clean up now. I was asked by someone to explain, I don't know, they said step by step, how to put one of these back together so that they'll be timed right. Um, it's really all not that all that crucial at this point um, there's a couple of one thing that's got to end up just right and that's this wheel right here this third wheel it's called the warning wheel the reason it's called a warning wheel is it's got a pin on it that you can clearly see That pin has got to be up near the top. Because when this is all back together, see if I can find the lever. This particular lever is going to be put in from the front. <clears throat> that pin in the end has got to be near the top. And it's not an issue right now because it uh, it has to be near the top when the gathering pallet that's on the second wheel that's this gathering pallet we haven't put it on and they can be adjusted after the clock is pre pretty much put together the idea is that when on the front of the clock when a lever is in this notch on that gathering pallet that warning lever that warning wheel with that pin on it has to be at the top and the reason for that is I'll show you in a second if it's kind of hard to work around this camera when that's at the top this lever here will have been put in here and you see there's a tab going to come through that slot that tab there is what that pin goes against to stop the cuckoo so when that tab on that lever is in contact with that pin then the gathering pallet is on the other side will have to be put on there so that this pin is sitting in that slot on the gathering pallet and that puts everything in time that's what how it's got to be in some clocks because the levers <coughs> and all work in such a way that that pin has to be put into its proper position the pin on the warning wheel has to be put in its proper position before you put everything back together or it's not not going to be timed right that's especially true in the in the common uh, american uh, mantle and kitchen clock movements uh, you got to have that pin just about where it's going to be uh, 
uh, when the when the uh, movement is in the rest position after it's after it's struck. Otherwise, you got to pull the plates back apart, turn a wheel part way, and get things all lined up. So, in this case, it's not that critical because you're going to be able to adjust things uh, when you put that uh, gathering pallet back on. Now, if you haven't taken the gathering pallet off and you've left that gear in place in the plate when you take the plates apart, then you're going to have to make sure that you put that uh, that pin in the, in the right place. Now, there's a couple other levers that are going to be going in here that I've left out now just to, to try to keep from confusing things. And that's uh, these two little guys right here. These two work together to keep the uh, to keep the door open. This hooks on that pin like that. It keeps the door open while the thing is is cuckooing. And then there's a little uh, lever on this uh, second wheel of the strike side, the one that holds the gathering pallet. That's got a couple of blades on it. This is the, these are part of that mechanism that, that kicks the door open and shut at uh, the right time, so. <sighs> anyway, I hope that explains it. Well, anyway, let's start to put this back together. You've got two trains now. This is the time train and that's this plastic gear meshes with the center gear and that's how it transmits power to the motion works which runs the hands so there's the first gear and you get the second gear the second wheel and it's going to go in here And then you've got the escape wheel, and it goes in here. And we'll put the uh, put the anchor or crutch in uh, just before we bring the plates together. Okay. On the other side, we've got the chain wheel, and oops. We've got the chain wheel. And it sits in here. And then we've got the second wheel. That's going to work to close the That's the lever that's going to keep the door open. And this little thing has got to go in there too, so got to go between the plates. Okay. I can almost see here. Little guy goes here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. When this is operating, Okay, so when this is operating, it's not going to pivot right right now. Oh, 
That's part of what keeps the bird out. Keeps the door open so the door is not open, opening and shutting the whole time here. Mess. Okay. Let me go back again. Start putting these in. Get that out of the way. Second wheel. Third wheel. And finally the fan. Governor. Okay. And on the other side, you've got main wheel that engages with that uh, with the motion works. And the second wheel. And then the escape. rest of these it's basically all you got to put in right now except for the for the crutch with the anchor on it so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead you gotta work in the longer ones first and as you get these on go ahead and just start the nuts okay now we can just get these started Once I get these started, I need to set the anchor in there. Just a little bit. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Come on. Get in there, baby.
Anchor was kind of hard to get in there. Okay, anchor's in. Now I just gotta start working these others in. It's hard for me to see. It's out of, out of a hole. Time side in. Strike that, and that's and that's and looks like everything's in. Double check, make sure nothing's out. wheels are back in. And here's our run side. And now with the anchor in place. It's gonna run. And the strike side. We need now to We need uh, lovers, and we need gathering pallet. The gathering pallet put on before we put on a rack and snail. Oh, anyway, this lever. the lever that is uh, hands turn. There's two little pins back here. Two little uh, lifts that will lift that. And that's moving. As it's being lifted, it's lifting this end of the lever. That's there's a part that sticks inside. It's going to catch that warning pin when it goes into warning. It comes this way. So as that lever gets lifted, it gets in the way of that pin. And when that falls off, it continues to run. Okay. So that one goes on there. And that's held in with an E-clip on the inside. And I suppose we'll put that one on. I shouldn't make something small for an old man. Hard for me to see this garbage. So that 
that lever is on. No, it's on. No, we got another lever here. It goes up here. It's also got an internal e clip. Drive me nuts. That lever now is what stops the rack. And it's also got the tab on it. As when this is in the up position, that uh, warning wheel can run past it. And so it won't stop. Get the warning in place. When that drops back, like so. Now this will run. Now the pin is at the top. Okay. Because it's stopped. When that pin is at the top, that's when we can put this gathering pallet on and make sure that that's in that slot right there. That's the proper position of the gathering pallet when everything is in a stop position. So we'll put that on in just a second. First thing we've got to do is put that internal e-clip in to keep this lever in place. I'll tell you what value your eyes. Did I get it? Okay, there we go. That's all the way on now. Now that's in position. All right, now, we're putting this together. Now, I run the, put some pressure on that main wheel till the clock comes into the stop position. That pin is against the lever, so the pin on the warning wheel is straight up. And at that point, that's when this gathering pallet should be in a position on this post where this lever is in a slot right like that that's how the gathering pallet should be I'm going to press that on I'm going to get a stake that gathering pallet in place now so now everything should operate correctly we should have that I want to kick this that should make it work and it should come to a stop all right there we go okay that stops that's fine so as long as that stops now what we got to do is we got to get uh, a couple of other things on here. These all kind of work together. We got to get on the uh, rack. Rack goes on here. Make sure that falls freely. A lot of people want to oil things. Do not oil any of these levers. They're just supposed to fall free. You put oil in there, when that oil starts to gum up and dry out, then these levers are just going to hang up. Do not oil any of those posts. The only oil goes on the pivot ends and uh, a drop of oil on the, on the pallets. But otherwise, don't do it. And I'm not going to put that E-clip on yet until I get the rest of this stuff on. We've got the center. We've got to go on here. Oh wait, no. We got a couple of things here. Going to get. We're going to have to put this on. Okay. That's the intermediate wheel, and we can't clip it down until we get this on. 
and I want to be careful how this goes on. We're in a locked position. Uh, that's yeah, that's right. This one is going to have to go on before I get this on. Rack. There we go. All right. So we get the rack on, and we got to adjust this position so that. So that that tab is in the center of a step on that on that snail. And now we're going to connect these two things and put this one on. Put a washer on there, and then we put an e-clip on that. Spring goes on here. Now we're going to need another e-clip for that. See it. I may have lost an e clip, which means I have to find another one. Okay, that goes there. And then the spring goes on top of that lever. It makes everything work real nice now. The rack fell off. rack on. I gotta find that dandy clip. Yep, I did. called polymyalgia rheumatica and it's uh, so I'm taking prednisone for it. The goofy prednisone is causing double vision in my right eye. It really makes it tough to do this right now. I don't see real good. That's how I feel too. Yeah, it came off again. All right. Magnifier helps. So there we go. Click. No, it's all on there. Gathering pallet. All the levers are back in place. Uh, what we have to do now is get this spring back on for the uh, 
Burn. I'm gonna shut this off. Okay. Got everything back together, right? Looking good. Got all the eclipse in. Now we have to put the hammers or the uh, lifts in for the cuckoos. And we've got two and one arm. One arm is longer than the other. The short one goes above. So we've got hammer, short, lift, and long lift. So let me think here. Yeah, if I put the long lift in first, let's try that. I don't remember. Yeah, just take them backwards. Put some light up here. Put them in this way. There's a little pin on it that goes in the slot. Once it's passed, you rotate it that way. Now it won't come back out. I'm going to do the short. Take that little pin that's there. Line it up with the slot. Put that in there. Flip it over. Now that one won't come out. And finally, we put the hammer in. Line the slot up. Rotate it around. It won't come out. And then we got to hook up the spring. Uh, let's see where that one goes. Okay. And last piece to go on is the the star wheel to do the lifting. Well, before we do that, we need to really oil some of these things because we'll, if we put the star wheel on, we won't be able to oil that one thing there. So, get some oil. So, I use some nano oil and my little oiling brush. We have a real fine brush. And again, you do not oil any of the places where levers pivot. Just don't do it. Star wheel goes on. And now what we gotta do Alright, let's see if that works now. Let's trip this. Oh, 
What was that? Didn't have that right. Okay. It's gonna be rotated just a tad. Now that should be right. Okay. Ding, go, go. Ding, go, go. Ding, go, go. Good. Time right. All set. I'm gonna put chains back in. Then we can see which way does the wheel turn. This wheel turns that way. That's the way we'll put the chain in. Just drop it over the wheel and rotate the click part of the wheel manually. Pull it straight down. Alrighty. Oof.